Hello friends. In our previous lecture, we have seen that how given a sequential circuit, uh, how do we analyze it and how do we create state graphs and state tables. Today, we will do a design exercise and we will try to see how we are going to drive a state diagrams, state, state graphs and state tables given a problem statement. So to understand how derived, how these state tables and state diagrams are derived, it is important to take, um, we will take couple of problem statements, we will start one by one. So the first problem we are going to take is um, a sequence detector. Sequence detector is a, is a simple circuit where uh, we are assuming that there is input, single bit input, which is coming at uh, one input in one cycle and there is a single bit output Z. So within this sequence detector, it is trying to detect a particular sequence. So uh, let us say this is the input and for the time being, let's also assume that we even don't know what sequence we are detecting. So this is the input X and this is the output Z and um, at at different times. So when we are saying time, so uh, we, 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 we are assuming that this X would be uh, stable for one whole clock period and it would, um, it would change only when clock will change. So once a clock is changed, let's say clock is changed at the positive edge. So at after positive edge, this X will change and X will remain uh, the constant value. If it is zero, it will remain zero. If it is one, it will remain one. Now, uh, if we see the sequence we are detecting is actually one zero one. So you see that initially we are assuming it is zero at time equal to zero. Uh, we are assuming Z equal to zero. Okay, and um, then X is zero. Then uh, next input come at time one is again zero. So the output is zero. Now next input came is one. <coughs> output will again be zero. Remember we are detecting one zero one. So uh, when again another one came because the sequence is now zero one one. So the output is going to be zero. So uh, then one zero came, zero came. So zero, see we see the last three pattern, the, the answer is one, one, zero. So that means again, the pattern has not matched the output is zero. When this one came, then uh, we see the last couple of inputs. We see one, zero, one, the, uh, because the pattern has matched, the output is one. Uh, then let's say another input is zero. So because the previous three bits are uh, 0, 1, 0, so the output is 0. Now with the same, the next input is 0, so 1, 0, 0, these are the three, pet, three bits, uh, it is not matching, so the output is 0. <coughs> now if 1 came, then 0, 0, 1, these are the previous three bits, so the output is 0. Uh, here also the output is 0 because the previous three bits are 0, 1, 0. Okay. Now here the previous three bits are 1, 0, 1. So the output is 1. Here um, the previous three bits are 0, 1, 0. So the output is 0. Now here um, the output is 1 because the previous three bits are 1, 0, 1. Now one thing to notice here that the output will be 1 when uh, my pattern has matched. So in the same cycle as soon as pattern will match the output will remain 1 during that clock period. Okay, So um, how do we start? So we don't know first of all that uh, what all we need to store. So one thing is clear that uh, we need to store last 3 bits. Whatever, whatever input is there currently along with that we have to store something of the previous bits which has been received. So let us see how we can um, we can draw the state diagram, how we can implement this circuit given that we even don't know what we need to store in what format we need to store. So the state diagrams as well as state table synchronous sequential system will solve these questions that how we can store this information that 
previous three bits are this so uh, let us start um, drawing the state diagram so uh, just keep in mind that we have 101 is the sequence and my output would be 1 when I have received uh, this this whole uh, sequence so whenever the last one is uh, is received then we can give the output as 1 so whenever we are drawing the state diagrams state graphs so what we do is we first of all initialize we assume that there is an initial state s0 this initial state s0 means we don't know what was the previous thing so uh, what was the previous input for sake of convenience we just assume that the previous input or the initial in initial input is is zero so because initial input is considered as zero now if um, another zero comes then again we are still in the same state because nothing has been detected and the sequence has not started however if uh, in the initial state if we receive one so that means at least one of the bit has mass so we should move to some new state so uh, still my output is zero you see this is a, a melee machine where we are representing the output at the transition so the transition is um, the input is one and the output is going to be zero now uh, in s1 state one bit has matched s this one has has matched so basically one bit has matched now if we receive zero after that then we should move to a new state s2 but the output is still going to be zero okay so uh, and further if we receive one then if we receive one then the output is certainly going to be one because we have matched this sequence 101 but the next state is uh, is s1 because s1 signifies that at least one bit has matched so let's say after 101 again um, after 101 then we have received this this because this now one would be there it would signify that at least one bit has matched so we can we can draw this state diagram by looking at the example stream and the example output that could be one uh, one of the method of doing it the other method is that mm, we keep in our mind that uh, what is the what is the initial state so basically meaning or um, semantic meaning of all the states s0 here means clearly that uh, initial state or no bit has matched s1 means that at least one bit one has matched and s2 means two bit one zero has matched so then we are in there in the s2 s2 state okay so uh, so far this state diagram or state state graph is is incomplete because um, for s0 we know where to go if input is zero we know where to go when input is one but at s1 state if input is 0 we know we have to go to s2 but we don't know what where to go if my input is 1 so let us think about it i am in currently in s1 state in s1 state the next input is also 1 so there is one which has already matched then another input is 1 so uh, where should we should we go to s0 s1 or s2 so uh, the pattern if it is one another one is there so then the sequence will become one one so which does not match uh, s0 which is not equal to this s2 also so what uh, at least one bit still remain matched so we can say that if the input is one the uh, next state is again going to be s1 now um, so with this s1 state is complete um, because we know where to go when input is 0 we know where to go when input is 1 what about s2 for s2 we know where to go when input is 1 but where to go when input is 0 so when input is 0 that means the sequence becomes something like this 1 0 uh, 0 1 0 0 so 0 0 means that uh, it is not matching anything in the sequence so 
possibly we have to go to initial state where nothing has matched so this is how we can draw a, a state diagram which is also complete basically we have seen all the scenarios all the cases that what would happen in each an individual state if the input is 0 input is 1 so given this complete state diagram or state graph then we can draw the state table <coughs> so um, I am directly writing this state table in terms of S0 and S1. So if it is S0, then um, uh, this is the uh, next state is S0 and if X is 0, then X equal to 0, then the next state is S0. If X is 1, then next state is S1. So it is essentially the same representation but written in a tabular form. <coughs> now if the present state is S1, the next state is going to be um, S2 if input is 0, next state is going to be S1 if input is 1. Now for S2, um, if the present state is S2, the next state is going to be S1 if input is 1 and S0 if in input is 0. So S0 is here, S1 is here. Now output is 1 only in one case when s2 it is going from s2 to s1 the present state is s2 and next state is s1 and the input is 1 so it's only in this case when the output is going to be 1 so so far uh, we have created this state table also now state table is uh, representing in terms of s0 and s1 we also know that these states would be stored in flip-flops okay so um, then the next step would be that we have to do state encoding um, so in the state encoding we have to assign some bits to s0 some bits to s1 so the total number of states are uh, three s0 s1 s2 we would require at least two bits to represent that which particular uh, to represent s0 or s1 or s2 so let us say um, keep it simple we say s0 would mean 00, zero s1 would mean 0, 01 and s2 means 10 so it is simple uh, decimal representation for those states then we can uh, write this whole state table as uh, um, we'll say that these two bits would be stored in two flip flops a and b where the output is going to be ab and then we can write this next states as a plus and b plus means that the input to my flip-flop assuming that the flip-flop is a d flip-flop so if x equal to 0 then we can say the next state is s0 so 0 0 is written if uh, the next state is s1 then we have written 0 1 similarly for uh, the present state is 0 1 the next state is going to be s2 that means 1 0 and um, it's going to be s1 if x equal to 1 so that means it's going to be 0 1 now um, if present state is s2 that means 1 0 the next state is going to be s0 if x is equal to 0 <coughs> that means 0 0 here and if x equal to 1 the next state is going to be s1 so that means 0 1 here so this way we have uh, written the state uh, table now the next thing uh, next thing is we have to uh, simplify it we have to find out the values for uh, a, a plus and b plus so um, for that we can we can draw a k map we can see what would be the value for a dash let's let's first do for a dash a, a plus so for a plus um, this is essentially uh, um, now we can write uh, in this axis a value of a b and uh, in columns we write the value of x so you see um, a b cannot be 1 1 so we can take we can assume that a b uh, when it is going to be 1 1 then it is a don't care condition okay so uh, given this don't care condition then we can uh, fulfill fill this uh, this k map entries that it's 0 1 x 0 here so if we try to solve for uh, for a plus then we can form this particular cube and because of this cube it would be x dash and b so we can write x dash and b it would be the uh, next state value for a Similarly, we can compute the next state value of uh, b dash b plus. So for b plus, um, 
it's 0 0 0 here so 0 0 0 here this is x this is x and this is 1 1 1 so we can write 1 1 1 here so uh, here uh, because of this don't care condition this can become a, a, a cube so uh, I can say b plus is equal to x similarly we can also draw decay map for uh, for z um, it's um, again straightforward here 0 0 0 0 0 1 okay so when we'll combine we can combine we can form this cube so that means uh, my z value is going to be x and a okay so this is how we can then we can if we would like to further we can draw two flip-flops uh, both of them being d type where input of a flip-flop is going to be x dash and b and input to b flip-flop is going to be directly x and my output would be a and with x okay so this is how we can implement that using two flip-flops and um, using this whole process okay so uh, this was a melee machine now there is one challenge uh, with the uh, with the melee machine that here we are taking an assumption the assumption was that my x will not vary during the clock period if x will vary during the clock period so um, now because you see here if x would vary along with the clock period then my z will also change with the clock period within that clock period so assume that there is one clock period within that clock period my x was varying from 1 0 0 1 and it was not stabilizing so that means my output will also not stabilize so therefore sometime it is preferable to have more machine where my uh, my output does not depend on the current input but it depends only on the past inputs so here let's assume that when this sequence is 101 after this sequence is 101 then we will say that my output is 1 so if my previous three inputs are 101 then only output is going to be 1 so output does not depend on the current input but only on the past inputs so if I would like to draw the state diagram for uh, for this sequence for a Mure machine then uh, let's try to start again we will start with S0 which is my initial state assuming that nothing has matched so this this assumption that nothing has matched uh, uh, he also clearly says that the output is going to be 0 again because it's a Mure machine so output depends on my state in which state I am it does not depend on the current input so because my S0 state means that nothing has matched the output is 0 okay so given that uh, the we are in the initial state and we further have a 0 so initial state also here assumes that my uh, I I am assuming that before this initial state it was zero before uh, before this initial state um, we still have to assume that before the initial state uh, there was a there was a zero in the um, it was initialized to zero essentially in in other words we are saying that uh, we have to uh, we have to assume something as a minus one so what what sequence we have to assume as a what input we have to assume as a minus one minus one uh, means that when time has not started then what should we assume so here the assumption is uh, it was zero so if it was zero the next zero came we are still in the same state that nothing has been detected not even a single bit however if one is there then we have to move to the next state just like a more machine melee machine that um, one would signify that at least one bit has matched so we'll go to the next state still the output is going to be zero because output has not matched the whole sequence has not matched so um, then we're there in the s1 state with the output zero now if the next input is zero 
then we'll move to the next state which means at least two bit has matched okay so two bits has matched we have moved from s1 to s2 state now further if one came then we'll move to the third state which means that all the three bits has matched here in this state because we are saying all the three bits has matched one zero one all the three bits has matched then the output is going to be one so far so good it's very sweet so far so we can now we can write the uh, the the meaning of all the four states s0 means initial state nothing has matched s1 means at least one bit has matched one the s2 means two bits has matched one zero and s3 means all the three bits has matched one zero one has matched now next steps are, are very crucial to understand and it requires uh, some bit of judgment that um, whenever we are completing the rest of the state machine uh, that what should be the next state so for example here for s0 state the state machine is complete because we know where it is going when input is 0 and we know where it is going uh, what would be the transition when input is 1 however when we are in state s1 then we know what would be the transition what would be the next state when input is 0 what what would be the state when the input is 1 now if input is 1 what is going to be the uh, sequence sequence is going to be uh, there must be a 0 here 1 1 0 1 1 so that means uh, what has matched 0 1 1 means only one bit has matched because it's not um, helping in any other match so we'll say that if the input is 1 then s1 state will still remain s1 state so the next state for s1 is going to be 1 if the input is 1 now for s2 um, i know that if the transition is 1 if the, if the input is 1 the transition will be 2 towards s3 state but what would happen if the input is 0 so let us see if the input is 0 the previous 3 bits is going to be 1 0 0 so um, from 1 then 0 then 0 1 0 0 means that um, we are probably we are probably uh, not matching any of them so we have to fall back to the initial state so that means nothing has matched 100 is not helping in any way in this matching of the sequence so we will fall back to s0 okay so uh, this way we will be able to complete this s2 state also and then uh, we will go back to s3 in s3 we uh, what would happen if the input is 0 here we don't know what would happen if 0 if input is 0 or what if what what, what would be the transition when input is 1 so let us say uh, input is 0 so if input is 0 then um, it will become 0 1 0 0 1 and 0 so 0 1 0 it it is not matching uh, initial state uh, it may match initial state but we'll say 0 1 0 it's not matching s3 but 0 1 0 see if we remove that 0 part then 1 0 is matching the s1 state these two bits are still matching the previous two bits one this is one and the current input is zero so that means these two bits are matching so we can say that we can go back to our s2 state okay so uh, if input is 0 then we can go back to s2 state okay that's done now what would happen if the input is 1 if input is 1 then um, the sequence is going to be uh, 1 and then another one because this is one another one so that means it would probably would be the s1 state which means that um, at least one bit is matching so we can put an arrow towards from s3 to s1 and we can say that uh, if input is one then we go to this state so this is how uh, we can create a state diagram for a Moore machine Moore machine so um, now after the state diagram then we have to decide that what should be the uh, 
encodings or what would be the state table so looking at that i have directly written my state table like this where we say this is my present state and what would be the next state when input is x equal to 0 and what would be the next state when x equal to 1 so uh, the 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 from the diagram to state table we have to see nicely we have to see a row by row for each present state we have to see that what would be the next state when input is 0 we have to see what is the next state when input is 1 and then we write this state table neatly so once the state table is written the next step is that we have to uh, do an uh, encoding so <coughs> let's give uh, again decimal numbers to this uh, 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 these states we can say s0 means 00, 0 s1 means 0, 01 s2 means 10 and s3 means 11 so which also means that we would require at least two registers two flip flops two flip flops let's call them a and b and um, so we can write this table this ab means the present state and a plus b plus is the input to my d flip flop that means that is going to be the next state and whenever active edge would be there this next state will become the present state because we are saying that um, the s0 is 00, 0 s1 is 0, 01 and s2 is 10 and s3 is 11 so we can correspondingly write the value of s0 s1 s2 s1 s0 s3 and s2 and s1 here and now we can um, we can find out the value of a, a plus and b plus and z also so if we see um, a plus so a plus uh, i am not drawing the k map directly looking at the table so you can see a plus would be there when this is one then this is one and when this is one so um, because this and this has only single bit of difference so we can say um, a plus is going to be uh, x dash and um, b x dash and b and for this one we there is no combination forming so there is no q forming so we can uh, write it as x a b dash for b equal to 1 so b is 1 only uh, for all of these four cases so we can say b equal to x b b plus is going to be equal to x and z is only true when um, a and b both are 1 so uh, we can solve it systematically using k map right now i have done directly by looking at the uh, state table so uh, there could be other encoding also so uh, there, there is no enforcement there is no rule that we have to always follow decimal coding so right now here i i am trying to do it using gray code so s0 means 00, 0 s1 means 0, 01 and s2 means 11 and s3 is 10 so uh, using this this gray encoding to my states now uh, let us see what would be the value of a plus and b plus so if i look at a plus a plus would depend on this one this one and this one so if you see that there is no cubicle there is no cube form because this is 0 1 this is 1 0 so um, you cannot combine any of the terms so you have to write x dash a b dash plus a dash b similarly this one also cannot be combined with either of these ones so we have to write x a b uh, now for b dash or b plus so for b plus also we see that uh, this is one here this is one here um, one here and one here so um, yeah i think i have not written it correctly but um, we can combine this we can combine these two so it's going to be um, so for b plus it's um, this is one this is one so this will become a dash b and uh, because this is one this is one so this become a b dash and because of this particular cube uh, this will become 
x and a dash so um, and z equal to a b z will not be affected so what you have seen that based on my encoding because my i have changed my encoding the size of my a plus the, or the uh, the logic which is involved in uh, in computing the next state has become uh, more complex or it would require more number of gates so um, which which also gives us a hint that the state encoding if you would like to optimize the total number of gates or to, uh, total number of uh, representations total number of gates to uh, implement a particular uh, state diagram or a state table then what encoding we choose may also be important in determining the number of gates we are not uh, right now focused on um, on reducing this this particular number of gates but um, this can be thought of as a as a good implementation or good optimization problem that what should be my state encoding such that the uh, the number of gates in this next state computation is is minimum okay so uh, here for this particular example we have taken couple of assumptions the first assumption was that my initial state in the initial state we were assuming that previously to the initial state there was a zero okay so assuming the previous uh, in the initial state uh, first time when the circuit has started entering we were assuming that initially there was a or basically t minus 1 at t equal to minus 1 the input was zero okay so this is first assumption the other assumption was that we were continuously checking for the uh, for the previous three bits so when we are checking for continuously and previous three bits so previous n number of bits we call this particular type of sequence detector as sliding window because my window is always sliding i am always checking at previous n inputs if the sequence detector is trying to detect detect n inputs so uh, further uh, the the, uh, the other assumption or the the other characteristic of this particular output what we have discussed today was that although one pattern has matched if one pattern has matched then we have also um, thought of like um, the the two patterns can be overlapping so if there is a 1 0 1 then again 0 1 so these 1 0 1 and 0 1 could could be the overlapping pattern so there is a one which is appearing in the first pattern as well, as well as in the second pattern so this particular type of sequence detector what we have discussed in today's lecture is sliding window and overlapping type so where one pattern can overlap with the other pattern and the window is always sliding on the other hand there could be other detectors which will say non overlapping so means that if i have detected one particular pattern the next pattern cannot be part of the my cannot be part of my first pattern so in case of non overlapping my state diagram is going to be different okay so but uh, we are still saying that we are still sliding window sliding window means that we are always looking at last three bits okay so uh, this sliding window and non overlapping could also be an interesting different problem interesting and different problem because we are looking at different kind of uh, solutions here and different state diagrams would be created different implementation would be there the third interesting case would be a disjoint window disjoint window, window means that uh, my inputs whenever we are going to detect we are detecting only in the for example here we are uh, detecting three bits so we are always detecting in the set of three bits 0 1 2 then 3 4 5 then 3 4 5 then 6 7 8 so basically uh, there is no sliding window we are always saying that first three bits then we'll match if it will match then we are good otherwise we'll again go back to the reset state again next three bits <coughs> here in case of a disjoint window what would be my uh, initial t equal to minus 1 value it doesn't matter why it doesn't matter because we are always saying we have three bits 0 1 2 3 4 5 similarly 
then 9, 10, 11. So basically because we are always in the group of three, we are using a disjoint window. It doesn't matter what is it equal to minus one. So it doesn't depend on what is the previous window. Okay, so um, now there could be other cases where we are assuming that at t equal to minus one, if the input, if t equal to minus one, we assume that my input was one. Okay, so then in those cases when t equal to minus one, the input is one, the state diagram would be slightly different. It all depends on what is the specification, what problem we are solving and uh, then it would depend on, then it would uh, say that how we are going to create those, those state diagrams. So uh, finally, like um, once, like in next couple of lectures, we'll try to design couple of different sequence detectors so that we will come to know, we'll do some practice that how to design these uh, state diagrams and so that we can know that how to implement these uh, state machines and then using flip-flops. So this exercise will try to do multiple times then you will understand it more. We will take some more complex examples also and uh, with those examples we will try to understand couple of different concepts in, um, in designing sequence uh, synchronous sequential machines. Thank you very much.